Hi, I'm Marcia Mason with Rancho Cordova Arts and today we're going to talk about light fastness and we're going to make our own light fastness test which is very cool. You'll be amazed. So I'm taking a piece of watercolor paper, not, not an expensive one, just right off of a tablet. And what we're going to do is make, make a fold of a third. Just like that. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay, but this is our guide. Now the reason we're pursuing this at all is because wouldn't you hate it if you sold one of your wonderful paintings and a couple months later you get a call from the person who bought it from you and they said, oh my gosh, the yellows are faded or the pinks are faded. It just doesn't look right anymore. I don't like it. It'd be so embarrassing. So uh, there is a time and a place for what they call fugitive pigments, the ones that are not light fast and that place is if you're going to make an original and then print it and sell the prints or keep the prints if you um, if you have an original that uses fugitive pigments you probably don't want to sell that okay now because it might be too good you don't want it to fade away what I'm going to do today is reds and we're going to be doing a series of them. So what I'm going to do is just put a little pigment right on whoo, the page right there and I'm going to write what it is. So the first one is Windsor Newton. It is a Windsor Red and the pigment is PR254. That means pigment red number 254. It's a pyrrole red and if you want to read up on the pigments you can at my favorite website for watercolor reference and that is called handprint. Okay so the next one is going to be Quinacridone Rose. And this is a Daniel Smith. I'm just going to abbreviate a bit. And it is a Q Rose. And the pigment number, because these are standardized internationally, PV19. Okay. Next, ah, this is a gorgeous color, but very light, a very uh, fugitive. There we go. That is a rose matter, genuine. That's a Windsor Newton rose matter, genuine, and it probably doesn't have. No, it's, it's a lake of natural matter. It doesn't have a pigment number. PR, NR9. I, I'm not sure what N stands for. Okay, here's a permanent alizarin crimson. Right there. Okay, and that is Windsor Newton. It's permanent. And we will be testing it. Alizarin Crimson. And that is... There, it's a Quinacridone and a Pyrrole. Pigment Red PR206. All right. And then we have a Paraline Maroon. Okay. And this is a Windsor Newton Paraline Maroon. And that is Pigment Red PR179. This is really good in botanicals. 
Uh, Opera Bros. I also call this Barbie Pink. <laughs> Windsor Newton Opera Rose. Yes. And that is Pigment Red PR122. Okay. And this is a fluorescent dye slash resin based pigment. Um, so that goes right here. And then I inherited an old set of watercolors, and I'm pretty sure what I've got here is, one of them is an alizarin crimson, not the permanent, the old kind, and there are two, two different pans with uh, similar colors, so I'd like to take this palette out in the field but I really uh, need to know if if I paint something with it, will it last? So I'm going to put that one there. And this one. This is such a cool old metal box. Okay. I really like it. Okay, so when we put down the color full strength, it's called the mass tone. And what I'm going to do for each of these is make a nice wide sample. Let's see, I want to make sure. What I want to do is make sure that I have my mass tone up here. And then I'm going to add a little water underneath and put the diluted color down here. And what's going to happen now, you can see what we're doing. You know that first fold that we made and we're putting the names? We're going to cover it up and put it in the sun for oh, maybe a couple months. There's our mass tone of the Daniel Smith. Oh boy, these are beautiful colors. I love color. Okay, there's that. And then we have our Rose Matter Genuine. This is the prettiest color when it is diluted. Okay, let's get some of that mass tone over here too. Okay, and that one was sitting for a while. You can see that some of the um, medium that the pigment is in came, uh, came uh, to the top of the tube. Okay, next we have our permanent alizarin crimson. Come here, little guy. Let me add a little more of him. There we go. Just because. Okay, you can see this isn't going to take a really long time, but the information is going to be really valuable. And that's what I like about reference materials that you make yourself, is you don't have to take anybody's word for it. You find out all by yourself. And then when you read something, you'll know if it's right or not. Or you'll know if you want to do that, if you want to paint with the colors that somebody else is using. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's a browner red than we've had before. Let me get this one. This is also an interesting color because after it dries, if you get it wet, it will move. Some colors, once you put them down, if you get them wet again on, like on top, if you want to do washes on top, they will stay put. But the perilines will move, and this one certainly does. You'll get blossoming and all kinds of stuff. Oh, okay, there we go, Barbie Pink. Hello, Barbie. Okay, yep, that is really something. Okay, and... Okay.
Now this paper came off that tablet. It's a student grade paper and it was called a cold press. But a cold press paper has a lot of hills and valleys all through it. And this acts more like a hot press paper to me. It's pretty smooth. And things don't go into little valleys. They kind of stay on top. Okay, I did that one here. Let's see if we can get more of that paint out of the pans. When I go and paint outside, sometimes I will take up the pan watercolors, they call them. Otherwise, I use tubes. Tubes are not, have nice and juicy paint in them. Okay, let's get a little more up here. I'm afraid I'm going to miss out on my mass tone there. Okay, and then the one below. And that is a little browner, too. Okay, good to know. And that's more of a red. Okay, maybe that's a scarlet lake. These are pretty old. Um, there's a little... Come back. There's a little uh, George Rowney and Company, made in England, artist watercolor box. And color is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. So, that is fun. Now, I'm going to put down that these are George Rowney, and we're not sure, so I'm going to put a question mark of alizarin crimson question mark, and I'm going to call this George Rowney, and I think that might be a scarlet lake. Okay. Now, for each of these colors, we have the mass tone and we have the diluted color. So, I'm going to let this dry, and after I do that, I'm going to fold it over. All right, I have evened all of my mass tones up as it was drying, and now I'm going to fold over on our fold, that third fold, and tape it down. I have a little bit of artist tape here, just so no light can leak in and mess up our results. There we go. So this side of each sample is going to be exposed to the bright sunlight, and this side is going to be protected. And I have written on here, light fastness test, the starting date, and I'm going to check in in two months and in four months to see what the progress is. And I will have the definitive answer of how light fast my red pigments are. Thanks for joining us today. Ranch Cordova Arts has an art tutorial every weekday at 4 on the Ranch Cordova Arts Facebook page or YouTube channel.